So I have decent expectations for this one. It's a Paco Rabanne 1 million Elixir, their newest, latest, and greatest uh, flanker release here. Uh, the note breakdown has me pretty excited. So of course, this one is following Paco Rabanne 1 million Parfum. Okay, so uh, there have been lots and lots of 1 million flankers at this point, and just a year or two back, we got a Parfum finally. And this, I have to say, it didn't necessarily let me down, but it really threw me off. Uh, the Parfum here went in a very floral direction. So really the complete opposite that you would expect a Parfum to go. Uh, you know, the One Million, the original is cinnamon, sweet, you know, very heavy, very rich, kind of sweet, right? Uh, playful as well. So I was expecting it to kind of riff on that and go even deeper and darker and potentially add maybe a bit of a booziness. And really, uh, when you take a look at the line, One Million Privé, I feel like would have been a better uh, contestant for a Parfum flanker than the actual Parfum, you know, which we got because it went in a fresher, brighter direction. So this one left a little bit to be desired. Wasn't disappointing, but just a little bit of a different twist. And so having a look at the note breakdown here with Elixir, I I'm pretty excited. We're going to go ahead and break into this one and we'll see what it's all about. Okay, so here's the bottle. Nothing uh, out of the ordinary. It's your uh, one million bottle style, right? Uh, the parfum over here on this side. One thing I do like is you have the, uh, you know, triangle, the Illuminati, Illuminati sign there on the front. And what's cool is they have kind of a, a black background behind it, which matches the back of the bottle here. That is glass. It is still uh, see-through if you get it in the right light. So you can tell how much fragrance you have left, but it's a nice little detail there. It looks pretty cool. Uh, most of you guys are very familiar with the Paco Rabanne 1 million bottles by now. Uh, so, you know, nice finish. Fingerprint magnets for sure. Um, there's probably already a couple on this one and I didn't even mean to. Um, we haven't done smudge test in a while, so uh, smudge test, eh, honestly not terrible. But uh, I'll let you be the judge of that if you can even see any smudges. So let's go ahead and get this one on skin. We'll see what it's all about. No caps on these, of course. Um, just atomizer on the top. So... Right away, this is reminding me of something quickly. A little bit like uh, Halloween Man X, a little bit. That's the first thing that came to my mind. Like this is real live first impressions. It has that same type of sweet balance. So that Tonka, that kind of vanilla, no coffee here in this one and I'm not picking up on it. It's not listed either. But it, it kind of fits in that similar category. It's almost like a, a Halloween Man X and Armani Code Absolute, right? That vanilla from Code Absolute, that Tonka sweetness from Halloween Man X. That's kind of what it reminds me of right off the bat. Uh, just a whole bunch of sweetness and vanilla up top. Now, as it's settling down just after a couple of seconds here, a little bit of a spicy texture is starting to come through, kind of breaking it up and giving it some variety. Uh, opens up with a little bit of a fruity top note. Uh, I do believe apple is in the note breakdown and there's a little bit of that going on, but primarily for me, it starts out sweet right away. And I can already say it goes in a completely different direction than one million uh, parfum over here on the side. Here's the thing with the parfum is, you know, floral heavy fragrances like this for men are still a little bit experimental, right? There's a Moschino Toy Boy, which is very floral heavy men's rose fragrance, right? And there are some people who love that fragrance and swear by it. And there's some people who don't like it. Maybe they go as far as to say they hate it. And I can kind of see both sides there. For me, in terms of something different, something to kind of break up the monotony of this hobby, Toy Boy is a cool scent. And kind of same with Parfum, but it is a wild card, being that it is a Parfum. And so it makes sense that not everyone likes this. And also it makes sense this one really didn't do as well as maybe they were expecting it to, or at least it hasn't done as well as some of the other flankers. Frequently, uh, the Parfum is on sale often at discounters. There's a point where you could get 100 mil bottles, or I'm sorry, 200 mil bottles, double the size of this for about a hundred bucks, which is an absolutely insane price. I mean, they were trying to move that stuff quick. So it's pretty safe to assume that this one isn't really moving all that quick. Um, you know, so 
uh, with the Elixir here, this is definitely more on brand with the One Million line. It has that sweetness. It has that kind of uh, youthful, playful, ever so slightly bubblegummy nature that the most of the line has. You know, when you take a look at the Parfum, it has so much florals going on to where it kind of throws it a little bit. We'll go and take a look at the note breakdown because I do find it interesting. We have Apple and Divana up top. We have Osmanthus, Rose, Cedar in the mid. We have Vanilla, Tonka Bean, and Patchouli in the base. So you see they do throw in a few florals there. And as it's settled down, I'm picking up on more of it. Uh, the Divana will give off this kind of green floral nature. And the Osmanthus is giving off kind of more of a straightforward floral note, so to speak. Of course, there's rose as well. So there's a good amount there, but it's not nearly to the level as the Parfum, right? There's a whole bunch of vanilla, a whole bunch of Tonka coming through, a little bit of a sweet apple up top. The patchouli would give it a little bit of a kind of masculine base, and it would kind of balance out the florals a little bit. That's kind of where it falls. The longer it sits, the more the rose, the divana, the osmanthus, the florals will come through there. So don't judge it right off the bat and say, oh, this is not floral at all. It's not at all like uh, the parfum. They will start to come through. But again, not nearly as heavy on the floral component as the parfum. So right off the bat, in terms of where this one is sitting in the line for me, it's definitely above the parfum. It's not, you know, on the same level as Privé, Discontinued, or One Million Lucky either. You know, I still, I, I like both of those a lot. Uh, Privé, of course, being that it is discontinued, it's harder to recommend that one. It's a great set, though, for a lot of you guys who own it. So it's kind of where I'm at right now. You know, I would still take the new Elixir over the original, just because the original, it has been overdone. And I do think that there have been a lot of improvements over the years on this DNA and you would be better off with the flanker of some sort. It's up to you to decide which flanker's for you. A lot of you guys would love the Parfum, that floral freshness. It's just kind of a curveball. It's not what you would expect a Parfum to be. The Elixir here uh, kind of plays off of that, but still brings it back down to earth, brings it back over to the one million side of things, which is frankly where I think the Parfum should have been anyway. Bits and pieces of the cedar is coming through, and I think that's where the spicy kick was coming from that I was referencing uh, just a, a couple seconds after the opening there as it started to settle, a little bit of a spicy texture. That would be from the cedar wood. You know, a lot of times cedar wood can come across dry, can kind of give off tendencies of like a pink pepper smell. You know, it's used in stuff like Bentley for Men Absolute, where you get a bunch of cedar wood pink pepper, incense, you know, spices, that sort of thing can come across very dry, almost pencil shavings. Not nearly to that extent here, but you do pick up on the cedar wood. Again, the patchouli, nice balance here for this one overall because uh, if it tipped too far in the floral direction, it would start to stray off that path. And I think that's where a lot of people struggle with the parfum is that it uh, loses touch of the, I guess, kind of masculine nature of the DNA to some extent. So in the beginning, when I first sprayed it on, like initially I was referencing Halloween Man X, Armani Code Absolute, it's drifted away from that uh, thoroughly now. So um, this is why I always say it's good to spray on skin and test on skin and it's good to let it sit. If you were to walk into a department store, give it a spray and be like, oh, this is a, this is a Halloween Man X, Armani Code Absolute clone, for example, and you just walk out. Well, you know, you're not you're not referencing the entire scent here. At this point, it has strayed away from those a good amount. Still bits and pieces, but the florals really take it to a completely different area. So something to keep in mind. If you think the same when you first spray it on, make sure you let it dry down. Maybe you're expecting something similar to those and you would be let down in the dry down. Or maybe you don't want anything similar to those and you will be put off right away. Give it some time to rest because this one, even after about nine minutes, has changed quite a bit. So let's go and take a look at what Fragrantica is saying for longevity. We're in the uh, long lasting category here um, is the majority of the votes, 43 in that area. And I believe it, you know, it's uh, not even sure the concentration on this one. 
it's a parfum intense is what we're saying here so you know i would expect around that for longevity being that it is made up of a strong base right the patchouli the vanilla the tonka bean you know it's always nice to see that so i believe it i think it's going to do well siage surprisingly uh, the majority of the votes are in the strong category as well a lot of times these days you see a lot of things in the moderate but this one's a step above for me right now it's way too early to be able to judge I do think it's going to be pushing pretty strong, though, pretty heavily. Right now, it's not coming across like it's, you know, a, an obnoxious scent by any means, but we will have to test it more. Um, let's go ahead and go down to the uh, comparisons here. First one being stronger with you, absolutely. So for me, I'm really not getting that at all, actually. I'm really not. Stronger with you, absolutely. Heavy on the chestnut, heavy on the rum, very heavy on the vanilla as well, and they do both share vanilla. Stronger with you, absolutely, also does have that kind of powdery sweetness. But aside from that, I think they're quite a bit different. You know, one thing you have to keep in mind as well is this one does start to lean towards the florals here as it settles down, and there's none of that in Stronger with you, absolutely. Next up, just the original 1 million, 24 to 18, so not really the best odds there. The original Stronger With You, same thing. One million lucky, not at all. Um, Zerzhov Herba Pura. It's been a long time since I smelled that one. I smelled that back before it was Zerzhov. It was, uh, and what was it? It was uh, kind of like how Mansara and Montal are. So there's Zerzhov and then there was uh, something else. I smelled it when it was not associated with the Zerzhov line. And I liked it, very fruity. I, from what I can recall though, doesn't really seem all that similar to me. Ultra Male, I really don't think so either. That one is so pear heavy and so vanillic in a different way that it, it just doesn't really fit for me. The new Stronger With You Only, uh, you know, no. Very chestnut heavy as well, and most people haven't smelled that yet. Not available here in the U.S. anyway. A lot of this is going to be blind voting. That's just how it is. Eros, Parfum, nope. Uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier Scandal, no. So here's what's interesting is... I see a lot of people voting here. I see a lot of people saying that they've smelled it, but no one's comparing it to the Parfum. The florals are, are very similar, you know. I'm not saying this is one-to-one -to, -one to the Parfum. You know, this opens up fresher. It's more floral throughout the entirety of the scent. But the types of florals used, I think people could draw comparisons there, and I didn't see that at all yet. Maybe it's just me. And again, I'm not saying that they are super, super similar, but... Uh, when you're talking about drawing some comparisons, I would think the Parfum would show up, especially over the original and, uh, you know, even over Lucky or something like that. Lucky's in a completely different direction. Does tie back to the original, though, a little bit with that sweetness going on, but um, not, not too similar. So that's kind of going to do it for me. That's my thoughts on One Million Elixir right off the bat. I'm, I'm liking it. Uh, right away, I'm liking it more than the Parfum. I just think it's a bit more appropriate fits in more with the line and look i'm not saying that every flanker has to tie back into the original right you take a look at some of their other ones and also some other flankers from other lines and some of the most successful ones don't tie back to the original at all in some instances but what i am saying is that it, it, the parfum would throw a lot of people off and i think elixir does kind of stay more true to its roots here which a lot of people would be looking for if you wore the original back in high school and you want something similar but with a modernized twist this could potentially be it for you not a mind blower definitely not one of my favorite new releases this year but i really can't complain either if you've tried one million elixir let me know what you think down below that's going to do it for me thank you so much for watching stay safe stay healthy and we'll see you tomorrow with another one take care